Hey folks, it's Javier Blog 208. Um, it grieves me to make this video, but I'm just gonna get straight to the point. Uh, Joe Biden can't win this election, and um, it's very sad. We're at the point where um, the polls are just not in his favor at all. And I know this is probably a conclusion that so many other people have come to. But I've been following the polls and the election and everything regularly and um, on, my, on a daily basis, actually. And um, right now, it looks like, based on the polling, the swing states, the so-called swing states, they're not even close. Um, and, um, for example, Wisconsin, uh, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. Trump is ahead by four points in all of those states. He's ahead by almost two points in Michigan. Uh, Michigan might be his best shot, actually. Um, now, it's showing that um, there were two contradicting polls that came out of Virginia. Um, one poll showed Biden five points ahead, and that came out on the 17th of July. And then a, and another poll showed Trump three points ahead, and that was a bigger poll taken. Um, hang on a minute. Now, with that being said, I personally have a very hard time seeing Donald Trump win Virginia. I don't really think it's going to happen. I know that their bigger poll, actually, the bigger poll on July 18th shows Trump with a three-point lead in the state of Virginia. Um, however, the smaller poll from, from, the, from July 17th shows Biden with a five-point lead, so they're contradicting. We can say that Virginia is pretty much a total toss-up right now, but I personally, and I can be proven wrong, I don't think that, Biden, that Trump is going to win Virginia. I, don't, I think that Biden can still hold Virginia, um, at least at this point in time in the election. Now, that being said, so I'm going to give you guys the math that I did based on the solid states, which now, unfortunately, and, and, and as insane as it is, show Pennsylvania and Nevada and Wisconsin um, to be four plus points for Trump right now. Um, Nevada being the highest, as insane as that is, is considering that Nevada literally went for uh, Hillary Clinton, Obama twice, and, you know, and even Biden last time around. So Nevada's been a very solidly blue state up till this point in time. But now it just looks like, for some reason, and I, I'm still trying to figure out why, it appears that Trump is crushing the polls in Nevada. And last poll I saw showed Trump with a 5.5% lead in the state of Nevada, which is mind-blowing. Like, even if Trump were to win Nevada, I would think that... Um, the state would be a lot closer even if you were to win it but especially with Reno and Las Vegas and those very uh, very liberal cities but it looks like for some reason Nevada just turned red and um, but anyway with that being said I did the math and um, it's showing with the solid, with, with what I call solid red states right now, and that includes Wisconsin, that includes Pennsylvania, and that includes Nevada. Um, combining Georgia and Arizona, which are five plus point leads, and combining all the other red states um, that we already know are gonna go for Trump. Um, and this excludes um, very close swing states like New Hampshire, Maine, New Jersey, which is also in play, as insane as it is. Um, excluding Virginia, excluding New Hampshire, excluding New Jersey, excluding Maine, excluding Michigan, and excluding Minnesota. Taking those six states out and leaving all the rest of the states in, including Pennsylvania, including Nevada, um, including Wisconsin, including Arizona, and including Georgia, where he has solid four plus point leads in um, Trump already gets over 290 electoral votes and those are at the moment solid red states 
which are very, very, I just don't see much of a shift. They actually seem at this point out of reach for Biden, which is crazy, which is mind blowing. Now, that being said, it looks very much so like Donald Trump is going to win those states and win at least 290 electoral votes, not counting Michigan. Even if Biden were to win Michigan, Minnesota, Virginia, New Hampshire, New Jersey, and Maine, even if Biden were to win those, Trump would still get 290 electoral votes. And those states, Pennsylvania and Nevada, are pretty solid for Trump. So um, it's looking very, very, very uh, scary. Um, if you're a Trump supporter, you know, I know you guys are cheering this on. Um, but if you're not with that movement, or should I say, this is a very uh, scary thing. Um, that being said, it looks like Trump's set to win 290 electoral votes as of today, solidly. I don't think that, I personally do not think that those states, Nevada and Pennsylvania, I mean, even though I expect Trump to win them fully in this Wisconsin, Nevada, Pennsylvania, I do not expect um, the actual voting results to be as high as the polls are. I expect the voting results to be closer because there's a lot of people that don't, they don't uh, follow polls, they don't do polls, they just don't listen to politics, that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of those people are mostly Democrat. And I believe they're going to get out and I believe they're going to vote for Biden regardless and make those states closer, but very unlikely to the point where Biden has a shot of winning them, considering that these are four plus point leads, in Nevada's case, five plus point leads. So, at minimal, at this moment, Trump is set to get 290 electoral votes. And that could be a heck of a lot more if Maine goes Trump's way, New Hampshire goes Trump's way, God forbid New Jersey and Virginia go Trump's way, um, and Michigan, which is also looking very likely to go Trump's way too. I don't think Trump will get Minnesota, but that could also go Trump's way for all we know, bringing him to a, a landslide victory. Um, so what can Biden do to win this election? Um, he can either campaign his heart out as an 80 whatever year old man. Um, and I'd sad to say he'd probably have a heart attack doing it. And I, I'm not saying that to be rude. I, I actually, I like Joe Biden personally, but that's my, that's my view. And I respect your view. Um, but the reality of the matter is, um, it's just not healthy for him mentally and physically and emotionally and even spiritually, all of the above. It's just not healthy for, healthy for Joe Biden to continue campaigning, um, especially to be, to be pouring his heart out in these states that are just like, he is so, so, so far behind in like Pennsylvania and Nevada and Wisconsin. And it just looks like he's finished in those states. And that's very, very sad. Um, now... And he really, and you know, we can also go ahead and talk about, you know, the whole idea about replacing Joe Biden, which is a very, very um, plausible thing to do. You know, I think that, you know, it looks to me like because that the Democratic elite, if you will, and that's what you want to call it, is working really, 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 really hard. And you got, you got to ask yourself the question, why? Um, is working really, really, really hard to push Joe Biden out of the election. And um, you got to ask yourself why. I mean, yeah, yeah, we think they know they're going to lose and they know Biden's old and really just needs to consider just taking a break for the rest of his life, you know, taking it easy, dropping out, taking care of his health. Of course, he should finish his term. But besides that, it's just not feasible for him, mentally healthy for him, to run for president. But you also got to ask the question, because it can get a little conspiratorial. Why is the Democratic elite trying so hard, Obama and Pelosi and, and Chuck Schumer and all these high-profile Democratic elites, why are they trying so hard to push Joe Biden out of the race? 
what are their ulterior motives? I'll leave that to you to decide. But anyway, now some of the events that, you know, really shift to the polling as we know are the terrible debate deformance, the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, which, oh my gosh, I have to do a video on that. I haven't even done a video on that yet. Um, and I will do a video on that. Um, and um, at the end of the day, you know, it's just those two things, you know, right now the right, they view Trump as a martyr. They view him as this, and it, it's really uh, frightening to see that. Now, my hope is that, you know, they're viewing him as a martyr, a savior, uh, you know, whatever, a martyr and a savior. That's what, that's what the right views them. They practically worship the guy, and that's just the cold, hard truth. And I see it. I see it. Um, it was practical worship at the Republican National Convention. That's very, very scary, and I can do another video on that, too. But my hope is that the best-case scenario that Democrats will wake up and see that they are literally worshiping Donald Trump they are literally treating him like a savior and a martyr because he got hit in the ear uh, by a bullet. They're saying that God saved his life um, when in reality, if God saved Trump's life, he let an innocent bystander get hit with a bullet and die. So God apparently cares more about the bystander than, I mean, God apparently cares more about Donald Trump than he does about that poor bystander teleprompter, by the way. Trump uh, criticizes Biden for using teleprompter, but that teleprompter was killed. Um, and um, so God saved Trump's life to allow that teleprompter to get hit by a bullet and die. So that's that's their uh, flawed and rather um, distasteful philosophy that they have. But anyway, more detail on that in the video I have coming up about this. Um, right now, 290 solid electoral votes for Trump. No chance of Biden winning. Best chance. He, he's his best move right now. And like I said, if he's a nominee in November, I will personally still vote for him. Even though I have no expectation of him winning. Um, but his best new move right now is to, unfortunately, to drop out of the race. And to allow either Harris or somebody else to take the, um, to take the um, nomination. And Harris's best chance of beating Donald Trump would be to get like a popular governor, for example, the Pennsylvania governor, Josh Shapiro. And then maybe that can shift things, or maybe the Michigan governor, Whit Whitner. But she has to, Biden has to drop out. Harris has to pick uh, like somebody quality to be VP, assuming she's going to be the nominee. And um, that's their best shot. So, thanks for watching. Um, I'll keep updating as I have new videos, but I just wanted to do this talk, so stay tuned. I love all of you guys' this is Javier Blog 208. Like and subscribe. Tuning out. I'll see you all soon. God bless and take care.